Well, thank you. I do remember um, Rick was also another one of my teachers as well. So um, I had a great uh, upbringing in the communications department here at Boise State. Um, my name is Jimmy Halliburton. I'm the founder and executive director of the Boise Bicycle Project. Um, I actually want to start by telling you a little bit about my, my graduation story um, from Boise State. Um, I don't know what year I graduated, um, but it took me a long time because I was fighting fires for the Forest Service and I was going one semester at a time. That's how I put my way through school. And I was taking my last final on the last day of school and I was getting ready to leave uh, for a fire in Florida. Um, on a hotshot crew, you go to wherever the fires are the biggest and they put you on the most dangerous spot of the fire. And so my fire buggy um, basically pulled up into Boise State's parking lot. Um, I finished the last question on my uh, Scantron final at the time, turned it in, walked out the door, walked into a buggy and drove uh, down to a fire in the dried out Everglades of Florida. And that's how I graduated uh, college from Boise State University. I didn't find out whether or not I'd actually passed all of my classes um, until 21, lays, 21 days later um, when I got back to Boise uh, after, after putting these fires up. So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's been a really, really fun history. And on that trip down to Florida um, is when I was filling out the application uh, for a 501c3 for a nonprofit status for the organization that I was starting the Boise Bicycle Project. So out of school, filling out the application, um, soot covered hands on the way to a fire, got back, graduated, started the Boise Bicycle Project when I got back. And so I uh, um, am very proud of the roots that I have here in Boise and really proud of the roots that I have here at Boise State. Um, I've got three goals. Um, in this conversation, about 10 minutes to achieve every single one of those goals. Um, one is to get you involved at the Boise Bicycle Project, um, get you creating impact and change um, by helping us get bicycles to people who need them, um, to convince you to get involved, if not employed, in the nonprofit sector, and then also to get you involved in a new initiative that I'm working on, um, which I think will be one of the next biggest things we see in Boise, and that's uh, multi-use pass and bike pass along canal access roads. Um, which would essentially extend our green belt to the entire um, community. Uh, so I'm going to start off with the Boise Bicycle Project. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my first bicycle ride that I can remember. Who, who here grew up with a bicycle? Raise your hand if you did. Pretty much everyone. Can you remember the color of your first bicycle? Yeah, a lot of times you can remember those first memories. I remember um, leaving my dirt driveway um, on old highway, off old Highway 55 um, turning onto the paved road for the very first time and feeling like my entire world had expanded. Um, I was no longer contained in my front yard. There were no fences. I could look at the open road and it was absolutely limitless. And I remember there was this feeling, this overwhelming feeling that I felt as I pulled out onto the road. Um, a lot of people associate that feeling with their first memories of riding a bicycle. Anybody guess what feeling, what word I'm looking for? Freedom. Freedom. Um, I can tell that story in Haiti, in Boston, in Phoenix, it doesn't matter where I am in the country or where I'm at in the world, and freedom is the word that comes up over and over again. That feeling of freedom that I experienced as a kid on my bicycle um, was something that I started to realize as I grew older that wasn't something everybody else had access to. So I started the Boise Bicycle Project, a nonprofit in 2007. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what a nonprofit was. I don't even know if Boise State offered any nonprofit classes um, at the time. They do now, Nonprofit 240, you should all sign up for it. Um, but I knew that we had people in the community who were facing transportation barriers and we could help them overcome transportation barriers by making sure that everyone had access to a bicycle, bicycle repair and bicycle education regardless of income. That was our mission. Our vision was, make, was trying to transform Boise into the bicycle capital of America, a place where everybody had access to these things and were not limited by transportation barriers. Um, today, we have fixed over 17,000 donated bicycles, bicycles donated by folks just like you in the community, fixed up and distributed those to uh, family members who needed those bicycles the most. Over 6,500 of those bicycles um, have been donated to children from low-income families. And every single one of those kids were referred to us by our nonprofit partners um, in the community. These bicycles for these kids are more than just a toy. Um, it's more than that experience of just leaving the driveway. A lot of these kids come from one car 
or no car households. And these bicycles are their ticket to community centers, after school programs, looking for work, um, healthcare. These bicycles are what are connecting these kids to the community. And without that connection, they don't have access to some of the other things that our nonprofits provide. The other incredible opportunity that I've had working at the Boise Bicycle Project is I've gotten to meet um, people from all over the world, um, all walks of life, all backgrounds. Um, we make sure that when, uh, when incoming refugees arrive in Boise that they have a bicycle within two weeks, that that is part of the welcoming process to Boise and that the connection to the community is the first thing that we help them provide. We work with people who are incarcerated, people who are recently getting out of prison. We work with people who are experiencing homelessness. We work with elected officials. We work with change makers, business leaders. And every single person, no matter what their background is or where they're from, um, has something to bring to the table. And I have benefited so much um, from sharing that time and space, <clears throat> excuse me, with every single one of those people. And I, and I have been really the person who's grown, even though that I'm the one teaching and providing these resources, I'm absolutely getting something in exchange. The first goal tonight is to get you involved with the Boise Bicycle Project. I want you to be one of those people um, who I'm learning from, whom I'm growing from, and someone who's getting to take advantage of sharing that space with so many people in the community. So how many of you are on Instagram? Raise your hand if you're on Instagram. That's probably most of the people in here. Before you leave today, and you can even do it while I'm talking, I won't be offended, I want you to follow Boise Bicycle Project on Instagram. There are gonna be three different opportunities coming up here soon. Our annual appreciation party at the shop, it's across the street, that I want you to attend. Um, I want you to get involved in our volunteer programs, no matter what sort of skill levels you have. If you can work on a bike, great. I guarantee you there's something that you know how to do that I don't. And those are the experiences, those are the skills that we want to bring down to the bike project. Thank you for uh, following us on Instagram right now. I can see you doing it. Um, yes, wonderful. Um, everybody else, do the exact same thing. I won't be offended if you pull out your phones. Second thing, second goal, I want you to get involved in the nonprofit sector. I graduated Boise State University. I had no idea what a nonprofit was. Um, now, that I, now I know that our nonprofits are the ones who are pushing the largest initiatives that are going on in Boise when it comes to climate change, when it comes to affordable housing, when it comes to domestic abuse, when it comes to social issues, our people in the nonprofit sectors are the ones who are creating that positive change and pushing it all the way up to the top. So if you wanna get involved with changing your community, the nonprofit sector is absolutely the way to start. Um, while I was working at the Bike Project, I was also volunteering at Big Brothers Big Sisters. And I had a, a little brother, JJ, who was born and raised here in Boise. Uh, JJ was overweight, him and his sisters, um, all three of them all had asthma, and they also lived right next to the freeway. So the back concrete wall of their yard, the freeway was on the other side. And it's not a coincidence that they all had asthma and that they were bringing, breathing in the emissions of these cars on a regular basis. I remember taking JJ to the foothills, the Boise foothills, to Eagle Rock, um, and we climbed up to the top, and it was the first time he'd ever been there, and he told me that the air tastes different here. I remember taking JJ to BBP, helping him fix up his bicycle and taking him for a ride on the green belt. And it was the first time at eight years old that JJ had ridden on the green belt. Getting involved with our nonprofit sector is how we take kids like JJ and give them the same opportunities that we've all had that have allowed us to be in this room today. And that involvement in the nonprofit sector is the best way to make sure that when we're talking about building a brighter community for Boise, that we're doing it for absolutely everyone. So if it's not the Boise Bicycle Project, I'm asking you to start volunteering, get involved with the board, um, start, start getting involved with another nonprofit in Boise. If you wanna create change, that is the best way to start. And if you wanna have a job that you can be excited about going to every single day, look at the nonprofit sector first. We need your skills um, and we need to know how to do the things that, uh, that you know that we don't. The last thing um, I mentioned earlier is about our canal pathways. So 50, 50 years ago, um, citizens of Boise, just like you, people in the nonprofit sector, got together and we started creating the Boise Greenbelt. Everybody told the people working on it that this would be impossible, that it was too hard, that it was too late, that it would ruin the city of Boise. And instead, we're celebrating its 50 year anniversary this weekend. And the Boise Greenbelt is the, actually the thing that saved the Boise River. It was a dumping ground 
um, before they started working on the Boise Greenbelt, and it created this central nervous system of Boise. And the number one thing that people say that they appreciate Boise, about Boise today is the Boise Greenbelt. And people told them it was going to be impossible. Um, we have kids like JJ we have, that are living by the freeway who don't have access to the Greenbelt, who've never been on there before, but they do live next to a canal. And the, all the canals go back to the Greenbelt. And there is a huge opportunity right now to use the maintenance roads that go along the canals to connect to the Greenbelt and create a massive network that serves everyone in the community. There was a little kid um, uh, about a month ago on Five Mile and Victory um, was hit and killed on his bicycle um, while riding home from school. He was within a quarter mile of a canal and a canal access road. Every single bicycle fatality that has happened in Boise in the last 10 years has happened less than a quarter mile away from an off-street canal access road. And people talk about it being too dangerous for kids to play along the canal. We're talking about the danger of kids riding next to 45 mile an hour traffic on their way to school or on their way to the library. This is an effort that you can get involved with with the Boise Bicycle Project, the Sierra Club, the Idaho Conservation League, Conservation Voters of Idaho. These are all nonprofits who are pushing this idea forward, who desperately need your help to get involved. So just to wrap this up, I'm asking you to get involved with the Boise Bicycle Project. I'm asking you to follow us on Instagram, and that's going to guide you to the next steps to volunteering, coming and partying with us. Um, I'm asking you to get involved with the nonprofit sector. If it's not mine, um, I hopefully it's one of uh, our other uh, panelists or the other nonprofits you may be working with in the community. Um, and I'm asking you to get on board with this canal effort. And if you go to www.sierraclub.org slash Idaho, um, or if you go to our Instagram page or Sierra Club's Instagram page, there'll be a spot where you can sign a petition that says you're for these canal access roads and it will sign, up for, sign you up for a newsletter list so you can know how to get involved. Um, my communications degree is the thing that helped me get in front of people and talk, share our story, get more people involved. Um, like the communications department is the perfect transition into the nonprofit sector. And as you're planning your classes, include Nonprofit 240 and start thinking about how you can use the things that you're learning today to really create change um, in Boise and beyond Boise by directing us towards the nonprofit sector. So that is all that I have. Thank you, um, thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> and I want to see your, your cell phones pop out so I can see you following. It'll make me feel good.